Hey, uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, today I want to give you the details of the restructuring proposal that is going out to staff for consultation over the next three weeks. Uh, and I want to tell you why we are restructuring. So you've all had a good uh, trot at speculating. So please give me some space now uh, to explain and then uh, we'll answer your questions. I want to be clear at the outset, even if the government doubled our budget, we would be doing this restructuring. It has not been driven by budget cuts. Yes, the global financial crisis has challenged the public service to deliver better services at less cost. In Doc's case, uh, vote conservation was reduced by $13.5 million in 2009 10 and a further $8.7 million from this financial year on from our budget of about $335 million. The budget reduction has not influenced the shape of the restructure. The shape of the restructure is about New Zealand achieving much more for conservation. It has influenced the size of the restructure. Having decided what we need to do, we did need to size that to capture savings. I am confident that we have substantially managed to do that without compromising our core conservation work on the ground. The restructuring of our service delivery being announced today has therefore been sized to reduce permanent positions from operations by about 140 at a saving of 6.6 .6 million a year. The 140 positions are made up of 118 management and administration positions. The department is taking out a layer of management. The balance is 22 field positions that come from creating a shared delivery centre for some services such as asset management and inspections and work planning. The shared delivery approach will allow us to work more efficiently without compromising the amount of work done. The reduction of full-time jobs by about 140 does not mean 140 of our permanent staff are going. We anticipated this over a year ago and have since filled 166 positions with temporary staff rather than permanent appointments. This will help ease the staff impact, but it is unclear yet to what extent. Because we have not permanently filled those positions, there are actually more jobs than there are current staff affected by the restructuring. I wish that meant there was a job suitable for every staff member, but it doesn't mean that. In practice, some staff have good reasons not to move location or apply for a different role. And for a few positions, we do anticipate we may have to look beyond DOC for the skills we need. So it is not possible to say at this stage how many people will be redundant. It is therefore unclear what the total impact on staff will be from this restructuring, but we are committed to minimising it and doing all we can to support staff who face difficult choices. The restructure replaces the current 11 conservancy boundaries with six regions and creates two functional groups, one to deliver field work, the other to grow that field work by developing and maintaining external partnerships with the community, business, local government, iwi and private landowners. The field conservation work will continue to be de delivered across all of the department's existing sites, but some offices will have fewer staff, some the same, and others in increase. This restructuring impacts severely on management, not rangers working in the field. We have taken out a layer of management from our operations. 
we can do that and minimise the impact by increasing our manager's span of control. It's of no comfort to those who are losing their current management positions, but in overall terms, it does mean that there will be very little impact, if any, on delivery in the field. Now I want to turn briefly to why we are doing this. The popular story is that this restructuring has been forced by a reduction in our baseline funding. It is true that we need to save 3% of our budget in this exercise. If that was all we needed to do, I could have prorated that across the existing organisation and you would have taken little, if any, interest. You do not put an organisation through major challenge and disruption if all you need to do is save 3% less on your budget. So let me be clear again, if the government doubled DOC's budget, we would still be going through this reorganisation. This reorganisation has been many years in the planning. It started well before the global financial crisis forced New Zealanders to wake up, stop building financial debt and start living within their means. This reorganisation is prompted by the reality that is dawning on people across the world that the global financial crisis has its parallel in the environment. We have not only been going into financial debt, we have been going into environmental debt. We have been taking more from nature across the globe than it can give. And now it's time to give back because our prosperity depends on living in harmony with nature. Our economy depends on clean water and plenty of it. Retaining our topsoil, regulating our climate, providing fuel, food, fuel and fibre, and so on. Conservation, the condition of our special places and the state of our native critters and plants, is a great indicator of how healthy our natural environment is. It is that realisation that conservation has a key role to play in better natural resource management across all of New Zealand that has prompted us to reorganise around growing the conservation business by engaging others in it. This is a New Zealand issue for all New Zealanders, not just DOC, on whatever budget a government can afford in the context of its times. If we think that the only conservation that counts is what DOT does on its government budget, then we are letting others off the hook, and business in particular. Across the globe, business is waking up to the fact that consumers are demanding it be much more environmentally friendly, and they won't buy its products if they're not. DOC is seeing our business leaders starting to take account of the full costs of doing business and giving something back to nature. It is small beginnings and far from enough yet. But if we don't adopt the ambitious approach that underpins this restructuring, then we won't start reducing our mountain of environmental debt. I will not stand back and watch that happen. DOT's restructuring is based on the growing international evidence that for an economy to be truly in the black, it has to be green. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take